Hello there. Thanks for joining me for the build-up to the grand finale of the AFCON 2019 show on Sahara TV. My name is Gideon Olanero. You can call it that the West meets the North. That is when the Taranga Lions of Senegal will be fighting out against the Phoenix of Algeria. It promises to be an exciting one. It's going to be massive. It's going to be the crescendo of all that has started in a couple of, in a couple of days ago. And uh, it's going to be the hallmark, the display of what Africa has got to offer when you talk about the round later game. Thank you very much for joining me on this edition. It is the AFCON 2019 show on Sahara TV. Once again, my name is Gideon Lanro. And I'll go on a break and when we come back, a gentleman joins me and we'll be looking at the final which is between Senegal and Algeria. Don't go away. It is Sarah TV. Welcome back. It's still the Afcon 2019 show on Sarah TV, and we are looking at the grand finale. It is Algeria against Senegal. And joining me to look at this is Suara Abbas. Suara, it's a pleasure to have you on Sarah TV. Ah, it's nice to be here. Yeah. Fantastic arena. Yes, uh, it started uh, days ago and it's going to be climaxing this Friday. Yeah. And like I tagged it, the North meets the West. Absolutely. So um, let's just uh, do a recap of how it began for these two teams. Uh, uh, coincidentally, they are from the same group. Yeah. Uh, they've met each other before the group stage yeah. and it was the Algerians that won by a long goal. Yeah. So this is going to be Maybe you might say it is a repay, a recompense time for uh, the Algerians. Uh, that's the Senegalese will be coming out thinking that they can also okay, okay. get a pound of their own flesh back. But but what do you think about this game? Uh, well, I think it's going to be um, it's the best final we can all look forward to see. Um, you know, on both ranks, I've always said it um, from the beginning of the tournament that whoever is going to win this one will surely have a superstar in their ranks. And if you look at both sides, Algeria's got Riyad Mahrez, who you know is one of the very best players in the world right now for Manchester City. And you look at Saido Mane, who has had a fantastic year so far. So it's more or less who wants to cap it up and um, you know put his name out there um, as to maybe who wins the African best. You know, it's always, it's always an, a target for them. Or Sedumani has also got a chance to make a big shout for the um, FIFA best as well if he wins the AFCON. So it's going to be a big battle between both players who are superstar. And looking at the team holistically, the Senegalese have been able to do the needful at every time they needed to do it. Um, when they need to divert, defend astutely, they do it just to make sure they get the needed result. And when they need to score that goal, they know how to score just one go and close shop. Mm -hmm. Something maybe the Super Eagles are not exactly, I mean, efficient at doing. And then the whole Algeria. Here is the same whole Algeria that played the Super Eagles that will be playing in the same final. Then believe me, it's going to be a fantastic um, final to look forward to on Friday. All right. Uh, yeah, talking about uh, the defense line of the Algeria too. The first time they considered in this uh, championship was against uh, that Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. And that was a run of play. Absolutely. And uh, against Nigeria, it was because a, a spot kick. Uh, uh, and uh -huh. this shows that this we're going to see two sides that are disciplined at the back. So are we likely to see a binary score line where it's just one goal, the shop is closed, or the floodgate might be open? Uh, well, I'm going to um, tilt a bit sentimentally. At least we won't have anyone to rival or Johnny Gallo for the highest goal scorer. Mm -hmm. So the man is on three. Um, I don't think anyone is. Okay, I think someone is also on three in, in, in the Tanzanian, mean, in the mm -hmm. uh, Algerian uh, ranks. Okay. But with uh, Gallo with five goals already, I don't think anyone will come close because already um, both sides have got strong defensive um, um, technicalities in their, in their ranks. They know how to defend for their life. And in the middle of the pack as well, they seem to be very, very good. The Algerian extremely outnumbered the Super Eagles in the midfield. They showed us the way it should be played properly. Not like they've got plenty of superstar names, but they've got guys who are pretty decent doing what they know how to do, and that works for them. So it's going to be plenty of battle in the middle of the pack for them. I think it's about who can easily demystify each other's uh, midfield, then go on the break. They've got fast players both sides. Mm. So it is about who becomes efficient on the breaks on the day that would get that one goal. Uh, defensively, the Algerians have shown a um, great um, job at the back. And they, um, I mean, the, the Senegalese have shown a great job at the back. And the Algerians as well, two goals, considering the second one vow, a spot kick, shows they know what they are doing defensively. And both coaches, of, I mean, coaches of both sides, 
um, homegrown coaches. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's a, from the national not team. Not so, Yeah, so it's it's a lot of pride going into this one. A lot of them also want to emulate Stephen Keshi. You know, the, the person who won it last for us was a groom. I mean, a homegrown coach. So it's a lot of pride going into the game. For, for both sides. So I'm seeing a lot of cautions being thrown to the wing for both sides. I won't want to see them do that elaborate football they play. I think they know once you do that costly mistake, it's always going to end up for you because they know the, the, the Senegalese know how to score a goal and close shop. The Algerians, in as much as they always like to attack and attack, because they, they, they did give us plenty of problem um, in, in the semi final. Though we were able to deal with a couple of them, but then it counted for them when it mattered the most through that free kick. It's, it promises to be a fabulous game. All right. Of course, for the Algerians, 29 years ago was what? When they won it back, uh, back at home in front of their team in France. Yeah. For the Senegalese, you can't say the same for them. So it's a game that these two sides treasure very well. So are we likely to see uh, the best of football on display on the grand finale? I, I think um, so far of the 24 teams that have gone to the uh, AFCON, the Algerians have been one of the most impressed, you know, impressive team. The Senegalese have, as well have shown a plain robust football. So um, even Nigeria who dropped out of the semi-final, we wouldn't begrudge the Algerians for winning that game because on the plateau of, I mean, I mean, a neutral, you would say. Um, strength for strength, ability for ability. The Algerians were fair, better than us. We're just counting on those bits of trickery and maybe some individual effort to sell, I mean, to scale us straight to the final. But on the basis of the football played on the night, the Algerians were good and we should be seeing a very fantastic ball from them in the final. The Senegalese as well, you know, um, they got what it takes. Um, I think we'll be seeing the best of African football on Friday. All right. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, could you say you've been impressed so far with the quality of football on display at this championship? Oh, well, um, individually, uh, I want to judge them based on the kind of players Africans have got in Europe and what they've been able to bring to the table. Um, I think the superstar players have, have risen to the occasion, except for maybe Mohamed Salah, who didn't particularly have a fantastic tournament. You would have expected that his quality will count um, for Egypt against um, South Africa in that, um, in that particular round but it didn't come to bear. Um, you look at the Super Eagles as well, in as much as we would never admit that we don't have a superstar player. And when Ganero was saying it to us that we don't have a superstar player, it looks like it was a sly on our, uh, on our, on our players, team. Okay. But it's just the fact that we don't have that superstar name. Um, I look at the whole team, Mikel Obi will never be a superstar anymore. You know, we, I think it's past his prime. Okay. Um, Wilfred, Wilfred Ndidi seems to be the biggest name. Maybe Alex Obi uh -huh. who plays for maybe the biggest club of all of them right now. He showed flashes, but you would also accept that he is not there yet, even though I still think he can improve on his game. Okay. Um, NDD, for all the good he did, for every goals we've considered, he had a, he had a role to play in it. Mm. He was always giving out the fouls. I, I think he's jinxed. Let me just put it that way. Because for every foul he has committed in delicate area, he leads to goals. The Riyad Mirrors, the, the, the one against South Africa, he has every foul he has given away has led to goals for us. But then it can grow. It can grow. Because so, of his age, right? Uh, yeah, because of his age. And looking at all the squad as well, Senegal, um, Senegal Saido Mane, I think he has he's he, achieved, he's achieved he's you know, you know, looked to his name. Mm -hmm. Riyad Mirrors, uh, he might not have had a fantastic game against Nigeria because of lying now and then um, um, Jamil Collins were dealing with him on both flanks. But when it mattered the most, when it was going to go into the penalty, it came, what, uh, it showed his squad. Yeah, that is what stars Pulling are made of. The, exactly, the uh, uh, absolutely. Yes. So overall, individually, the players have been good. Holistically, as teams, um, I haven't seen the best of football. I think African football still need to improve a lot on their technical ability. We might have all the talent, but the inability to put games, I mean, to make game pleasurable to the high isn't exactly there yet. But I hope we can get better. All right. Okay. For you, uh, of course, uh, it's looking like it's Odio Ogalo's, Odio Igalo's yeah, uh, I hope, I hope golden remain. boot to yeah, pick. Yeah, but uh, let's look at who is going to be your. Uh, most valuable player for this championship? Oh, it's difficult to call, but I think Seydou Mane will take it. I think Seydou Mane will take it. And if he takes it, um, you know, he only keep 
I'm waiting the ground for him as to other colleagues that can come in the year. For his coronation yeah, as uh, uh, yeah, African. I, I, I think that's no best. that's no contest anyway. Mm. Is the African best already? Either they win the final or not. Either they go to the final or not. Is the African best? You know what he did with Liverpool. He, you know, in a team where you have um, Salah and Mane in Liverpool. I mean, trying to win points for your team and also having a direct battle, even though it doesn't have to come to bear. Um, Manu was a better player for Liverpool last season, all round, and he's been able to take his team to the final of AFCON. Um, I think he's African best already. All right. Okay, um, that's it. And uh, that is, uh, but the, may the better side win this as we all look forward to the grand finale of the AFCON 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, special thanks to Swara Abbas for yeah. joining me for this edition. Absolutely. All right. Okay, that's it. That's a wrap from here. Uh, of course, uh, when next you're going to be seeing me, we will be recounting all the experience and all the excitement about the games. See you very soon.